But first, Ron Tanner is back with us from Specialty Food Association talking about a very serious issue, which is food recovery and food hunger. And, you know, when this show is over at the end of today, Ron, there's, you know, tons and tons of food. What happens to it? Well, the food goes to people that need it. Um, we've been working with different organizations over the years to recover the food from the fancy food shows. Uh, the San Francisco show, it's a little bit smaller than our New York show, but we're estimating around 54,000 pounds of food are wow. going to go out of here. And it gets out of here and gets collected in about four hours after the show closes. I know. I remember seeing it in New York. I mean, it, they just come in and, and they take it. And when we talk about this food, we're not talking about food that was out there you know, where, where people were getting samples. These are all packaged foods. These are foods that, you know, really are going to feed a lot of very hungry people. They are. I mean, there's safety rules with the food. So of course. you can only pick up food that is unopened, you know, packages that are unopened. And even with cheese, you can only take a full wheel of cheese. You can't take like a chunk of like cheese. A, okay. um, but it's, it's, it's exciting because people who don't get this quality food, you know, they know that this food is coming. You know, right. they get excited about having it. In New York, in particular, yeah, our show is right before the 4th of July, and we work with City Harvest in New York. In New York, it's 104,000 pounds of food that's recovered, and the people of New York City know that for their 4th of July weekend, they're going to have some you know, really nice mustards and maybe some good right. sausages and some cheeses and things like that. And, so. and we're also talking about a population that are not normally purchasing or even have these foods available to them so it's really you know exploding their taste buds in in a whole different in a whole different arena and i think you know it's so important for a specialty food association to take this kind of stance you know really to to think holistically as i mentioned um you know what, what we're seeing here is a whole different type of of energy and a whole different type of um exhibitor than perhaps we're here when, when you and I first yes. started to come to the show. I mean, these are people who care about the world, care about the planet, care about humanity, care about feeding people. I was just speaking to someone yesterday um, who's introducing a new breakfast cereal, and what they're doing is similar to Tom's with shoes. For every box of cereal that someone buys, they're donating a box to people who are going hungry. Well, and, for our, our leadership awards, which we gave out on, on, on Sunday night, uh, there's a company that does a lot of work in Haiti. Um, the owner yes. of the company was in Haiti. He um, saw that the people in Haiti were eating mud cookies. Mud cookies are mud, mud. that they would bake, yeah. and they would do it to make themselves feel not hungry. So he, you know, got, you know, one and inspired by this. And so for every package of his superfoods that he sells, he donates a, a meal to a child in Haiti. So there's so much, so many people doing good in the specialty food industry, and they particularly like to do good at the show. You know, Absolutely. it's a great opportunity for them to get their products out to people that are need in need. And also business-wise, it's good for them because they can donate their products. And rather than spending money to ship their product back, they're allowed to take that donation as a tax um, credit. So it really helps um, helps everybody. It helps everybody. It you helps know. everybody. And that's why we encourage the companies to do it. Yes. You know, there's no reason not to do it. It Absolutely. benefits everybody. And and just shipping back food, you know, to your place, it could get damaged, spoiled, whatever. It just doesn't make a lot of sense. Uh, let's talk for a minute about those leadership awards. Um, you mentioned one of them, but that was very inspiring. You know, we had Walter Robb kicking it off. Um, he, he really gave some, uh, some meaningful leadership lessons and, and energy to that whole group. You know, what he's doing now with Food Maven, uh, actually being able to recover food waste and selling it to restaurants at a significant um, discount, 50% discount, and then the farmer gets 25% of what normally would be just thrown away. So this is definitely a movement that we're seeing as it relates to feeding people, as it relates to protecting the planet. Oh, definitely. I mean, the statistics show that 40% of food in the United States is wasted. And, you know, any way that we can help with that, you know, we want to be able to do that. You know, a lot of that waste is from consumers, you know, and there's a need to educate consumers. I know I'm one of them. You know, when I go to the store. Not good. When Not I'm, good, Ron. But when I go to the <laughs> store, I always say, okay, I'm yeah. going to be healthy. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. buy the salad and I'm going to buy this hummus. And, you know, I'll come home after a hard day of work and I'll say, okay, maybe I'll 
now have some sausage and some potato chips. Right, right. You know, and what happens is I uh, end up throwing out the salad and hummus. Or actually, yeah. in New York City, um, this New York City is going to be a zero waste city yes. in the next five years. So you can actually in New York now recycle that. It goes in your food waste container. Um, but but consumers need to know, you know, how to manage things better. And I think one of the presentations that I was seeing was just saying, in a way we have made food so cheap in the United States and a lot of the grocers and others are showing that it's cheap that people don't care about right. it you know and almost they don't in, really have the value they of it. don't have the value of it and almost in a way with specialty food they get that value because you're much more likely to throw out cheese that you bought for two dollars a pound than cheese you bought for thirty dollars a pound correct so in an odd way I think specialty right. food is helping with that yeah. and also if we look at this this global movement of what's taking place you know France was was really the first country to ban supermarket waste so a supermarket cannot throw out food they've got to donate it They've got to resell it to restaurants before it goes bad and so on. And when we look at these kind of movements um, around the world, um, there's, there's a fabulous restaurant in Berlin that's actually only open three days a week um, to be a restaurant. The other four days a week, they hold classes mm -hmm. for consumers to be able to understand how to avoid food waste. So, you know, what, what you're doing here, what you started here uh, for, for a number of years is really growing in leaps and bounds. And I think that uh, from a consumer level to a retailer level to a brand level, if everybody is concerned about food waste, we can hopefully get to zero food waste. Oh, we can, we, we can make a real difference, which yeah. is important. And as you see, the, you know, walking the streets of like San Francisco, I mean, there are a lot of very needy people yes. here. And the city of San Francisco and the, you know, 501c3s that operate here really try to make a difference. Um, but it's, it's so good to be, you know, to know that they're going to be having something that's nice. Absolutely. You know, and that they're going to be enjoying all this great food that's coming out of the Fancy Food yeah. Show. So who do you work with um, here in San Francisco to be able to make sure that that product does get to the right hands? Well, we have a new partner this year. Ah, okay. So it's a, it's a little complicated the way it works, but the, the organizations, our members, donate the food to the Specialty Food Foundation. The association has a, has a foundation. The foundation focuses on food And that's waste. how they get the tax deduction. And that's yeah. how they get the tax deduction. Okay. So the Specialty Food Foundation does letters to everybody that donates, saying what they donated, how many pounds it was, how much it's worth. Actually, these letters are a challenge because we're such an international organization. You know, we may get two cases of food and they'll say it's worth, you know, 80 euros, yes. you know, or we'll get things <laughs> which, get are in, which, which are in yeah. milliliters, right. you know, and we have to calculate all these different yeah. things. But we do receipt everybody that donates to us and gives us the information, and then they can utilize that on their taxes, and that works very well. Um, but it, it's more complicated, so it's given Specialty Food Foundation. We're working with a new group here called the Food Recovery Network. Um, they're a great organization. They actually started at the University of Maryland um, probably about six years ago. And it was a group of students that said, oh, you know what, there's a lot of excess food in our cafeteria. And um, let's get this out to people that are in need. So, yeah, so the organization started, and they now have over 200 chapters in universities all over the, the country. And they are bringing in students from San Francisco State and from some of their chapters here to be able to recover the food. And first time they've done it, I think they're a little bit nervous about it. I of think course, we're a little bit nervous about it. Of food is, it it's is a lot of food to move yeah. out of here. So, um, but it, it's well organized. They'll all be wearing shirts, you know, so people know that these are the people recovering the food. And you have to be really careful. You know, members get stickers that they can put on what they want to donate. The stickers say perishable or non-perishable. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty simple. Um, they go through and recover the perishable products first. So anything which is refrigerated needs to be out of a booth and into a refrigerated truck within four hours. So that's, that's the rule in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. That's the rule in New York. Yeah. Um, so those are concentrated on first. So that stuff will get out of here really quickly. So what happens if um, you had sent a letter to somebody, they didn't think they were going to have you know, food left over, but they do have food left over, and they're, they're seeing the people walking by. Do they still have the ability to give it to them? They do. 
Oh, great. They okay. do. But they have to be asked, you know, right. and actually they have to volunteer. Yeah. You know, we don't... So it has to be the exhibitor who, who sees one of these people and say, hey, I got some food, give me a sticker, right. I want to be part of this program. That's so we correct. need the exhibitors to be much more proactive. The Nobody's exhibitors need to them. be proactive, and some of the exhibitors will say, um, and it sometimes work through their floor manager who manages mm -hmm. that, and they'll say, hey, you can take my entire booth. You know, and they'll go through and they'll take everything out of the booth. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. But most of the companies, you know, they plan beforehand. They're good with putting sure. the stickers on their products. Um, we want to make sure only products which are stickered, which are, are taken. Yes. You know, because they may want some of these products. You know, they may come be coming back tomorrow to collect sure. these products. We had one situation happen a couple years ago where one of our members member had put all his show orders in a box, you know, in a... In a you know, yeah. Saul's a case, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and it was collected, yeah, yeah. you know, and ended up at, you know, the food bank, and we, we actually got it back for him. Oh, good. Yeah, we got okay. it back for him, yeah. but it was not the easiest thing to do, so we just have to be careful sure. with that recovery. Well, to, to all the exhibitors who have already committed to donating food, and to all the, our exhibitors, you know, who haven't yet, but when you see these people going down, reach out to them. If you've got extra food that is packaged, as Ron described, get those stickers, let's do something really meaningful with all this terrific food and help people who frankly this meal may make the difference for them of having the only meal that they have all day or maybe even all week so Ron thanks great job as always well thank you we'd love to be above that 50,000 pounds this year sure. so if the members and the exhibitors can be generous we'd love to get that up to 60,000 pounds so that's the challenge 60,000 pounds don't forget it we're gonna take a break when we come back more at SFA News Live right here on the Moscone show floor in San Francisco at the 2018 Fancy Food Show